Okay, folks, I'm going to show you a demonstration of when you want to uh, take to the extreme of using cologne work. Now, cologne work uh, should only be kind of worked if that the edge uh, on the character is extremely different. So, for instance, you can see this C-stand that's in the shot. Um, we want to paint this thing out, and we could do it the old traditional way, which I showed you in the last demonstration, which I can come back over here to my reveal brush. Set this to background input one, which has an offset transform. And I can just come over here and try to paint this out. As you can see. Right. But we got this little black divot here. And we also have this bright area too. So let's go ahead and just take a look at that off and on. So there's a, there's a huge difference there. So this is where we want to look uh, spatially uh, in the areas around it. There is a variation of bright and black, but there is this kind of black fringe that kind of moves through here. So we this is actually, again, too bright. This is too dark. So again, clone work sometimes is done past the pre-malt stage or here in the early game before any work is done. And the reason why people like to do it uh, after the pre-malt stage is because you'll be able to see any artifacts more prevalent after the key has been pulled. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my uh, clone tool. I'll set my opacity down to something like 0.2 or 0.1, hardness set to 0, or maybe let's put the hardness to like 0.1 in this case. And let's see if we can kind of pull this area out. Remember, we got a bright area here, we have a dark area here, so I'm going to try to just gently neutralize that area if I can. Let's see if I can kind of, so in this case I'm probably trying to darken this, that area right there. And let's see if we can kind of... Alright, and then you got this area here, which is too dark, and you can see there's sort of like a whole divot there, right? So I'm going to try to fill that hole. And again, even line up these pixels. You can see this is the most, this is about 20% transparent. This is about, this should be 20% transparent. So I could come in here and just start kind of putting that in. And just look at your plate before and after and see, d is there a divot? In other words, does the, the do I chomp into the mat and then come back out? Or do I grow the mat? Do I extend the mat? And you can just take a look at it and probably say that there probably needs to be a little bit more transparent yellow here. So then I can come over here and clone and do my best here. Oops, too much. And again, probably bring your opacity down. And again, you want to hold down the strokes as long as possible um, because it's going to be, and there you can see, that's the kind of work gang that I, I saw in the industry. Um, they get that picky, folks. Um, so if you're kind of like, oh my gosh, it's going to take me 20 years, well then don't shoot a 500 frame sequence with somebody standing in front of a C-stand. Um, you know, it's the best advice I can give you. I find that if you have a C-stand, um, take green tape and have it face towards where the camera's at, and then you won't get th these roll-offs of darkness. Um, if you get, you might get a thin line at the top and the bottom, but if the piece of tape is facing towards the camera, uh, you're going to get less of these shadow and highlight uh, workflows. Um, it's just the way I find, I find it works pretty good. Uh, you might get a little bit of highlight, but you won't have to do as much clone work. Now, let's talk about doing this in the pre-malt stage. So this is the scene after the background has been added, and you can see there is a black uh, background here. Now, this is the, p this is the actual p portion where everything is seen. If I switch between the different views, um, I'll go ahead and put this to the pre mount stage. You can see the artifact that you're looking at here. You can also see the alpha in the process. Now, the question is, you know, how much of a variation? You can see we have a divot there, right? So again, if I go back to the original plate, or the, the finished uh, composite, you can see that we do have sort of like a dark edge there. So again, you can come over here and put this past the pre-malt stage, right? And this roto paint will be set to output RGBA, because you're not just cloning uh, uh, red, green, blue information, but you're also cloning alpha information. So somebody, again, will come over here and do this. And just do, again, you can see, like, uh, did I need to do all that cleanup work you saw up there? Or can I just kind of cut to the chase, depending on how 
fast you need to get something done and how what qual kind of quality control you're required to be. I know that they won't let this stuff, uh, some of this stuff fly in uh, other studios. Um, but you can see I could just come over here and start to clone this out. Of course, this is going to take longer because all my kind of edge treatment work has been done. But you can kind of see if I take turn this off and on, we have that. One last uh, sort of uh, clone work uh, demonstration that is not really clone but reveal work. And that is how you can actually just uh, do a temporal adjustment based on a tracker. So here I have a tracker where I went ahead and tracked through the scene where the actual uh, C-stand goes through the shot. And I just tracked this little area because it's got some nice contrast to it. So you can see it like that. So what you do is you take your tracker and you come in here and you choose uh, Transform st uh, Stabilize. And then you plug that through the footage. And then you take the tracker again, make a match move, plug that through. And then between the Stabilize and the Match Move, you want to create a time offset. And I usually will put in like four, four negative four frames, which offsets the footage. So what's the, what this does is it stabilizes the uh, portion, just this area we should be really worried about. And then it offsets it by four seconds, and then the match move puts it back into place. So now, if you take a look at the uh, original versus the match move, you can see they're basically in the same place, close, uh, not perfect. Planar tracking uh, with relative and stabilized might work a little bit better for this, but then you're going to take an actual uh, hit on the sampling or the resampling. Uh, in other words, it'll get slightly blurrier if you do that. Um, again, there, a lot of the th these things take, sta uh, take uh, hits in regards to that uh, information. So if I hit uh, background 3, I can plug that in make that something that I can reveal. So again, I could just put my viewer to the roto, uh, roto node here, take this, uh, go to reveal background input three, go to reveal, and you can see how I'm revealing uh, another frame pr uh, just previous or four frames ahead. So you can see how I can come in here and it's gonna maintain that weird fringe information it's going to get weird around these areas because I'm not tracking, I'm, tr I'm, tr I'm still tracking two-dimensionally, but the rotation and the shifting of the shape of the character might change uh, to a certain degree. So it's just something to be aware of. But you can see you can get away. And you have animated uh, grain. Okay, so it's not, it's not freezing an image. You're not freezing the actual footage, hence the grain is uh, unfreezing, and you're going to have to regrain the, the image itself. But it does allow for you to... Uh, kind of cheat a little bit so you can see so that's another good uh, just example when something goes by really quick now again I will show you examples in the future how to take scenes where people are just standing there and they have us uh, you know just some kind of you know thing that goes back behind them and it's a long sequence so that's where uh, utilizing more stabilization but revealed rotos as opposed to roto paints uh, will make more sense to avoid any chatter along the edges. So these are techniques, again, um, you can critique them, say, hey, I tried this, it works a lot better. That's what we are as a community learning. So by all means, uh, go ahead and correct me and go ahead and recommend good ideas at the bottom.